Welcome to Rens to this three day meditation workshop holding in Rice Lake, Wisconsin. I'm very happy to see all of you here. And this will be three days of some work, not only talk, but some walk. So that is why it's a little different from the other programs we have. Today I want to introduce to you what we will be doing during these three days. We will go through different steps that we take for self-realization within ourselves through meditation. Meditation is the art of withdrawing your attention from outside and placing it inside on your own self. The secret of enlightenment, the secret of finding the truth, is to find yourself, your true self. We are regarding our outside covers like the human body or our sense perceptions or our mind as our own self. None of these are our own self. These are covers upon our self. Our self is the immortal life principle we call the soul which makes the mind alive, it makes our sense perceptions alive and it makes our physical body alive. We have to find what the soul is. So many people are meditating to find something different in their body, not the soul. I have practiced this kind of meditation with many yogis who taught us how to discover the potential of having many energetic experiences because this body has several energetic centers, centers of energy. All the centers of energy lie in the eyes or below the eyes. But having energetic experiences does not give you any clue whatsoever what your soul is. And that is why all meditation experiences, which we call yogic experiences, which lead to our greater information and greater experience of our energy centers that lie behind and below the eyes do not give us any inkling of who we are. They do give us some unusual experiences. Those centers lie in this physical body, mostly in the torso of the body, starting from the bottom at the rectum, the genitals, the navel, the heart, the throat and the eyes. These are the six centers of energy. All our consciousness operates for the use of the body through these centers. We connect to the world with these centers. This body also has, along with these centers of energy, has nine approaches or doors opening out outside. There are the two eyes, the two ears, there is the nose, the mouth, the two lower apertures. Nine doors take our attention outside. And the six centers of energy, they help us to use these nine doors for our contact with the rest of the world. That is how this body lives in this physical world. At the same time, we also have the equipment inside this body in a small area, not this large torso of our small area of the upper part of the head only. That is behind the eyes and above the eyes. That area contains the center of awareness. Awareness is not the same thing as energy. Energy is something we use. Awareness is something we know. True knowledge of ourselves comes from opening up the centers of awareness. Uh, unusual experiences, energetic experiences can come by opening up the centers of energy. These are two different things. And many of us have been mistakenly believing that both are the same. They are not the same. Similarly, we sometimes mistake our sense perceptions as part of our physical system. And we do not know how the mind operates, how karma operates, how old memories operate. Therefore, very often we think that the awareness is coming from the brain in the head. And that is why the whole thing is included in the brain, physical brain. This is not true. 
So many people have been able to remember things that happened even before they were born. There are people who can create cast life regressions for us, and when they do that, we can remember even things that happened 100 years ago, 200 years ago. By trying to provoke our memory, we can remember things that happened even before we were born. Which means the brain, which is part of the body, is not holding that memory. Something else is holding the memory. Since we do not go within ourselves to check what is holding the old memory and what is inside, we are unaware of what else lies inside this body besides the physical brain and the physical organs of this body. But meditation upon our own self, which means thinking about our own true self, which means putting our attention on our true self, opens up the window of knowledge about things that are beyond the physical body. For example, we say sense perceptions or the power to see, touch, taste, smell, hear, they are all occurring because of the organs which in the body. We think we can see because we have eyes. But we forget at that time that we also see in imagination. When the eyes are not being used at all, we also see in dreams when the eyes are closed. Now, that means seeing is not the same thing as seeing with physical eyes. Then what is seeing? Seeing takes place in something other than the physical body. Otherwise, there would be no such thing as imaginative seeing. That is why we have never even examined how do we see. If we try to really discover, does the mind see? Does the sense perception see? Does the physical eye see? We notice that we can ascribe seeing to any one of these things. Because when we mentally think of something, we can imagine that picture and we can see. When we have an imagination, we see that these eyes do not operate there. Is that sight seeing part of the body or is it something else? This can be discovered very easily through the type of meditation I am going to speak to you about, namely withdrawing your attention to that part of yourself you can see without these eyes. There you can hear without these ears. There you can touch without these hands. There you can walk without these feet. And that part is actually responsible for these eyes and these ears and these hands and these feet to work. It is not the other way around. That we have something inside us which has all the sense perception and very accurate sense perception which seem to be clouded somewhat when we try to use them to the physical body. That's a great revelation for us that we have something else operating inside which is not dependent upon the physical body at all and carries all the sense perceptions that we are used to using to the physical body. We use it all the time, that inner body. When we imagine, when we foresee something with our inner imagination, inner mind, we are using those sense perceptions. In dreams, we are using the same sense perceptions. But we do not willfully, with our own volition, try to find out where it is happening. Meditation, we can find that out. How does meditation work? Meditation is the art of withdrawing our attention from outside to inside. That's all. It's a very simple process. We have made it difficult because of our attachments to our experiences outside. If we did not have so many attachments, we would be using the inner self as frequently as we use the outer self. But our, our outer body attachments have created a big problem for us and it becomes hard because then we want to put our attention within our own self. These outside attachments and these desires outside become in the way. Otherwise, it's a very simple matter. When we meditate upon our own self, we start by meditating upon the self that is able to see without opening the eyes, which is our imaginative self. That means, if we close these eyes, then imagine that we are seeing things, we are not seeing with these eyes, then who is seeing? That's our inner self. 
we, we are using our inner self all the time, but we don't put attention on it. In meditation, we start putting attention on it. As our attention increases on our inner self, we use a certain power which has been given to us called the power to concentrate our attention. It's a very big power given to us. We can concentrate our attention on something and then we become unaware of things on which we are not putting attention. It's a big, big, a very big benefit we have of this special power that we can concentrate our attention wherever we like. Here are some beautiful flowers here. If I start admiring these flowers, right now I am aware of all of you and the flower. I start admiring these flowers, look deeply at them and put all my attention, I will forget that you are also sitting here. The more attention I put here, the more attention I put on these flowers, the less aware I am of other things. This is a great benefit to us and that is what we use in meditation. When we put our attention on the inner self, the one that can see in imagination, the one that can see in dreams, the one that can see with eyes closed and in complete darkness can imagine something and we can see it. When we put our attention on that self, we gradually lose interest and do not become aware of what is happening outside. Not only we do not remember what is happening outside, we even begin to forget where our hands and feet are. We begin to forget where our legs and arms are. And then we begin to forget where our whole body is and the inner self that we are using to see, touch, taste, smell becomes our own reality. That's the first step in meditation and a very useful step to tell us this body is not our real self. There's something else sitting in us which is also real, maybe more real. If we are able to stabilize that experience for some time, for a few months say, if we are able to have that experience every day. What happens? Then you begin to feel that the inner self is independent and is working in this body, but it has some functions which we think are in the body. For example, it can remember things. It cannot remember what happened outside. When we are in a physical body, we try to remember things, we remember what happened outside. When you are trying to remember something inside, it can start remembering things that happened before you were born. You don't have to go to a past life regressor or somebody to find out what happened. You can easily find out what you were, what you were doing by the inner body of sense perceptions which has a much longer life than the physical body. It was there before you were born. It will be there before you die, after you die. That's the inner self. The inner self also thinks, like this, in this body we think, inner self has a mind, like we think this body or the brain has a mind. The inner self that is able to perform these sense perceptions, we sometimes call it an astral body or a sensory system body or a body that has all sense perceptions. What it does not have is matter. It does not have any physical matter. This physical body has the same sense perceptions, same mind, plus physical matter. So when we become unaware of the physical matter of the physical body, the inner self opens up and we discover it is so light because there is no matter in it. What is making us heavy here in this physical world is physical material body. That body consists of sense perceptions and a mind and our soul. Our soul makes these things alive. Soul makes the mind alive. Soul makes the inner body alive. And that is why the astral body or the inner body can be discovered by us by simple process of withdrawing our attention from outside, from the body, by concentrating it on the spot behind the eyes inside the head. Why that point? Why should we concentrate at that point in a physical body, then we are trying to find something non-physical. The reason is that the inner non-physical body, which contains sense perceptions, is right now operating in this body from a center inside the head. And that center has sometimes been called 
ये थर्ड आई थर्ड आई सेंटर द इनर सेंटर द सेंटर ऑफ कॉन्शियसनेस द सेंटर ऑफ वेकफुल कॉन्शियसनेस व्हाई इज इट कॉल्ड द सेंटर ऑफ वेकफुल कॉन्शियसनेस बिकॉज़ व्हेन वी आर अवेक इन द फिजिकल बॉडी वी आर एक्चुअली ऑपरेटिंग फ्रॉम देयर आल्सो व्हाई इज इट कॉल्ड थर्ड आई सेंटर because these two eyes physical eyes they do not see what we are seeing outside if the physical eyes were to see these are two eyes separated we would see two images we see only one image where does the where do the two images the two eyes are seeing two different pictures on the retina of this eye where do we combine them that we see distance and we create distance by seeing two eyes where are we combining them If you examine that and close your eyes and say, "Where do I make one image of two images that are in the eyes? We make them behind the eyes, at the center of the head, and that is why it's called the third eye. The third eye actually sees through the two eyes, even physically. It's not something you have to find somewhere. You're using it right now. The moment you use two eyes to see one picture, you are using the third eye." I'm making this point because many people say we have been meditating for a long time. We can't find our third eye. I tell them you were in the third eye all the time. There's no other place to go when you're awake. See, the point is not to find it. The point is to put your attention on it. The meditation is not trying to find something. Meditation is to withdraw your attention to your own self. You are operating in the physical body from third eye centers in the wakeful state. Anyway, and why do I keep on saying wakeful state? Because in other states it is not at behind the eyes. For example, we go to sleep at night. This location of where we are operating from shifts. It goes downwards, and when we are half asleep, it is almost at the level of our nose. and that you can check out at night when you're feeling sleepy you can try to touch your eyes right now in the wakeful state you with your eyes closed you can touch your eyes very easily you know where they are if you're half asleep try to touch your eyes you will touch your nose and think you're touching your eyes mm-hmm. which means that actually the location of where you think your eyes are from where you see the world itself shifts when you're dreaming You can't force the memory of your body. There are some yogic practices in which you can remember the body while you are dreaming or in a lower state of consciousness. Let you touch your eyes in a dream state. You will touch your throat, and you think you are touching your eyes. This is because our notional location, where we operate in the body, changes. We are here behind the eyes because we are in physical state, aware of the physical body and the physical world. If you are aware of something else, the location changes. If you are aware of something higher than the physical body, like forgetting the physical body and having a knowledge only of our mind, this place shifts and goes a little higher. So there is a different location depending upon what our state of wakefulness is, a dream state or higher wakefulness. It shifts. So the body is only carrying our life force for an experience. and since most of our physical experience takes place in the wakeful state therefore we are constantly at a third eye set and operating from there that is why if you when you do meditation and you want to have the experience i am talking about which means experience of concentrating your attention behind the eyes at a third eye center you do not have to search for any center you are there you have to put your attention on yourself where you are but the problem arises in the beginning that you think you are sitting on the chair or on the floor wherever you are sitting and that's where you are because you are associating yourself with the body just one little change has to be made i am sitting in the body where am i sitting if you just ask this question i am not sitting on my chair i am not sitting on the floor i am sitting Inside my body, where am I sitting? You close your eyes. You say, "Where am I sitting?" Automatically, because your eyes are in front, and you are trying to look from inside. You will locate yourself where you are really operating from in the wakeful state. This is the most important step, according to me, to have successful meditation. 
thousands of my friends have spent years and years not understanding a simple point that we are already at the third age center. There is nothing to be found. Only we have to know we are not the physical body. We are inside the physical body. We are driving the physical body. We are using it from where behind the eyes, from where we look out with these eyes, where we hear. Very important. Seeing and hearing are very important to consciousness. They continue even higher than the inner body. Listening and being able to speak and to be able to see. These are very important functions and they are operating. The mind speaks at the same point. We listen at the same point. We hear at the same point. The third eye which we are sitting at right now is located right behind these eyes in the center between the two eyes between the two ears. Very clear. We are already there. All we have to do in the first step of meditation is to realize that's where we are. There is some help that can, we can get from a simple process called imagination. How does that work? We close our eyes and we are aware of the whole body. We concentrate our attention on the head and we imagine we are sitting behind these eyes. When we imagine something, our attention goes away. If I imagine you are sitting on top of this building, my attention will go there. If I imagine I am walking outside, my attention will go there. If you imagine you are sitting there, our attention will go there. If I imagine I am singing a song there, my attention will go there. If I am imagining I am having a cup of tea with my friend inside, my attention will go in. Meditation is not to worry about what mantra we are repeating, what kind of practices we are doing, and put all the attention in the world, we just do this. Meditation is to pull your attention to the hand, the eyes, between the ears, where you are already located in the rectal state, if you are not the body. So that's a very important step. I myself, after I got initiation from the great master, Sri Maharaj Baba Kaun Singh, the picture you see here, for some years, I didn't understand how to find a third eye center and where to sit. Because he kept on emphasizing in his discourses that you must first establish yourself, sit behind the eyes before you start meditation. He did not think it was meditation to close eyes and try to find out something. Meditation starts when you start to discover where you are and that inner body has to meditate. Not this body. This body is for use outside the world. We tend to find something inside. We have to use our inner body for that. And that is why I had to go to him and say, I can't find. He did a clever little trick with me. He said, raise your hand and your finger right up in the air. I said, you can't see where the finger is with these eyes. No, I can't. Because it's up there. But can you imagine you are sitting up there? Can you raise this self, or what you think in your ears? Can you think you are going up there? So that I can do, it's imagining. So I imagined I was there. He said, are you still imagining you are there? Yes, I am still imagining I am there. So bring it down slowly. Are you still there? I am still there. Are you still there? Still there. Jump in. Jump in. Uh -huh. And you are okay. <laughs> it, it's simple. That happened. So he explained to me. He said, now where you are, that's where you are. So this is so important because we are not meditating here, we are, we are complicating our location where we have to meditate even further by buying a special chair for meditation, buying a special cushion, special carpet rug. We say we got a very expensive rug and using it for meditation. Then you meditate on the rug. It's obvious. If you have a special chair, where is your attention going? to the chair. Some people set up a special place in their house. This is our temple. This is our mosque. This is our church. This is our synagogue. It we made it in our own house because they say you can find the truth in your own house. So we made a nice place and that you can come and see. We have got some, some of that, uh, what is the word? Yeah, so have a kind of 
um, things that are burning, some little meditation music is playing outside and you are meditating there. You are meditating on that essence going down, you are meditating on the mm, candle that is burning, you are meditating on the special flower you get there. You are meditating on outside and you have made sure you will meditate outside because you made that special for your faith. And that is why people are doing it for the whole time. And they get nothing. They say, no, meditation doesn't work. It doesn't work. You are doing it in the wrong place. There is no place outside if you want to meditate to go inside. The only place is inside. So, put your attention first inside and make that your meditation chamber. You want to put a nice chair? Put a chair there. It's only imaginary. Imagine you have a beautiful chair there. It won't even cost you any money. Yeah. Chair outside will cost you money. Sometimes we spend so much on outside things and the truth lies inside. A friend of mine, he had to come and see one of my programs and he said, I will come and meditate with you. I said, very welcome. We have this meditation workshop. It's your most welcome to come. Then before the meditation started, he wrote to me, I'm sorry, I can't come. The $300 I have earmarked for travel to see you. I have placed on buying a chair. It's a very beautiful chair. It costs $900. I don't have $900. So I have invested $300 as a day away. <coughs> so when I complete my payment of $900, I will get that beautiful chair. It's so wonderful. You will love to see it when you come and see the chair. I said, I'm sorry that you can't come. But at least you will get a chair. <laughs> After the next program came and he wrote to me, I'm sorry I can't attend and see you because I had to place another seat in that order on the day away for the chair. Now one more installment and I will see, get the chair. After that I will come and see you. As it actually happened, after the second installment of the he died. Never got the chair, never saw me and the attention was all on the chair. Now imagine, if our reincarnation, rebirth, takes place because of where our attention is, where our desires are, that unfortunate soul has to be reborn to get a chair. Can you imagine how much we get attached to something? And he will be specially attached that he could not get the chair. I have to get my chair. I paid for it. And he missed his little opportunity of where I could have told him, you can get a chair, most beautiful chair, without a single penny, just inside your head. That costs you nothing. It's an imaginary chair. But it's a chair inside. And when you sit on that chair, you're thinking of inside. Your attention is inside. You can have nice decoration. When you start sitting there, there's place for a chair. When you look at the body, there's no place for a chair, it's so small. When you close your eyes, there are plenty of place, not only to make a chair, but to decorate a whole room. You can put nice windows, nice uh, curtains, nice drapes there. You can have nice carpets put up there. So long as you do this in the area at the level of the eyes and the body. Don't start making it a heart center. Because then again you go to energy center. You will not get higher awareness. Nobody is gone. I spent years and years with these yogis and spent so much time on practice of the energetic centers. You don't get higher awareness. You get new experiences. Experience is not the same thing as finding yourself. Some people are saying, Oh, I was very successful in meditation. I saw some red light and some blue light and I saw some star shining. Sometimes they will come from here and there. I said, if I knock you hard on the head, you will see all the things. <laughs> what are you talking about? Can you call a little experience like that as a realization of yourself? What have you found? You only find your own self if your attention is an own self. Right now we think our body is our own self. When we do meditation and start assuming we are sitting in the inside. That becomes our own self. And later on I will tell you during the course of this meditation workshop, 
when you meditate with inner body, in the third eye center of the inner body, even the sense perception disappears. And your attention is withdrawn. You can still think. You are still alive. The thinking becomes very clear and relieved because the mind is still there. Sense perception, if you withdraw your attention. Physical body, withdraw your attention. But the mind is functioning. And then we think that's ourselves. The mind with which we think is ourselves. That is also not true. Our self is which makes the mind alive. We are the life force, the soul. The mind is also the body. The mind is creating all experiences that we are having with the senses and with the physical body. And we don't realize it. We think experience comes from somewhere else. We are merely experiencers sitting here. Then you go to the stage of the mind. Then you discover the mind is creating everything. That's a very big revelation for us. It turns everything topsy-turvy. We thought that we have come into a world to experience it. We are generating a world of experience at the same time experiencing it. So that's a very wonderful way to discover the origin of all entire experience, origin of the whole creation can be found out by discovering our own mind. Therefore, the mind also has been called a body. And they name it the Karan Shari causal body. It causes all things to happen. But not ourself. It's still a body. The only problem is, after that, there is no way we can do anything to go beyond it. Because anything we do is done with the mind. Every effort we make is made with the mind. And when you say, I'm going to do it, or the mind is speaking. So your mind can't speak up and get away from itself. And that is why a large number of realized saints even, even realized, yes, Mahatma has spoken to them all over the country in India and outside in other countries. And they are all finishing thinking the mind soul is the same thing in your origin. When they discover the variety of experiences that can take place at the mental level, they begin to realize there is a higher mind, lower mind. They can see many kinds of mind. They see one mind from which all minds came. Universal mind. They say we have found the truth. Everything. But that is not the truth. Truth is, we are a soul that does not even think. That just provides life. That makes mind alive. Creates the mind. Creates the bodies. That's the soul. Life principle. That's our true self. And there is no way anybody by any meditation, by any practice can find it. I'm sorry to say that. People say you can find your true self by trying very hard to do something. The harder you try, the more you are depending on the mind. And yet there are masters, ordinary human beings, like this man who picture you see here. Great master, Baba Sawan Singh. In this physical body, he had gone beyond the mind. How did he go beyond the mind? He helped so many of us, other people, to go beyond the mind. How did he help? When we know meditation can take us there, how can anybody help us to go beyond the mind? How can we help ourselves to go beyond the mind? The truth is, only that thing can take you beyond the mind, which lies beyond the mind. Thinking, effort, meditation, work, is all within the mind. Yeah. None of these can take you. Yeah. But there are some things which are beyond the mind and we are experiencing it even here. Most important of them is experience of love. What is love? They say God is love. And they say this whole true spirituality is love and devotion. Why do they emphasize that? Because love does not come from the mind. Love does not come from the sense perception. Love does not come from the body. Love comes from our soul. So, there is something. Some soul is functioning in us and creating an experience right here and at every level, including the level above the mind. Love is there. Therefore, if something can take us beyond the mind, it is love. But love is one word only. What is actual love? Love that pulls. There is a love that pulls and there is something that is pulled. One is called lover, one beloved. 
How does that happen? Ultimately, what the truth is, there is only love. God is love. The greatest power is love. No matter what name you want to give it, love is a secret. And that love insight is your own reality and own truth. So when I say love pulls you, it's as much as saying your own reality pulls you up. But you can't see the reality. Therefore, a human being like this great master, who is aware of that state of love about the mind, why is it as a human being? Not that he had one time, we all had one time. That why is still a human being at that time is not only experiencing the mind, the senses, the body, but also what is above the mind through love. And when we come across such a human being, something happens to us which can't be understood by your thoughts easily, which can't be understood by your perceptions, can't be understood very well by your body, but pulls us. We think we are being pulled by something outside because our whole attention is outside and the same love that's inside us is recreated outside through the human being appearing in our life and such a human being we call a Sansar Guru, a perfective master. What is his qualification? He may be totally Ill illiterate. He may have never gone to school. He may be absolutely poor. He may have no virtues whatsoever that we can see. But he is aware of his own true self beyond the mind when he is in a human body. That's a secret. When, when he comes in our life, something pulls us, which we can't really explain too well. Because love is not easily explained. Because when we get explanation, mind comes in. Mind works to explain things. And love cannot be explained so easily, but it felt very strongly. Who feels it? Not the body. Body can feel sensual pleasure. Body can feel the copy, imitations, physical imitations, sense imitation, mental imitation. But not true love. True love touches our soul. So the love coming from the soul, pulling out the soul. When that happens, we are pulled beyond the mind. So secret after that is no more meditation, being pulled by love, by our own true self now being recreated as another human being. Because at that stage you find all of us are one. It's actually the same power that pulling. But at this stage we don't know. There it appears like another person who comes. That is why sometimes people ask me, do we need an outside agent to find our own God? Why do we need masters and gurus at all? If God is inside us, we have the secret, God is inside, we should just seek inside and find out. The truth is, when we seek with our mind, we can't find God. But a, a human being coming outside, what does he say? He doesn't say, I am God. He says, go inside and find God. He doesn't say, come outside and take you to a certain place where you find God. He says, find inside your own self. And when you go inside, you see the same human being you see outside, sitting inside. And he says, I was just sitting outside because you always looked outside. I was always inside. Perfect living masters are not outside. We don't look inside, therefore they appear outside. And then we think they are outside, but they tell us to go inside where we discover their identity. When we are pulled by love beyond, we discover there was no difference between the perfect living master and our true self. So the true self was really appearing. Now, when does this happen? After all, it's a very rare event that we are able to be pulled by our own self and we are living in this physical world and I don't know how many lifetimes we have all lived here. When does that happen? When we are tired of this experience. When we say we have had enough. If we say we are enjoying our life, keep on enjoying. There is no time for that kind of event to happen. Only when we feel we do not need this anymore, we have had enough of this. We don't know how we came here, we don't know what the truth is, but we are tired of it. We don't want to stay. This is not our true place. We know this is not our true home and we have to go back to our true home. When these feelings come, then we are ready for this event. 
Golden events happen, a perfect unit master comes into our life. We can't find him, but he will appear when we are ready. He will appear by coincidence, by chance. Circumstances will be so created, he will appear and our mind is still trying to judge. How can an ordinary person be helpful? It will also have other arguments. Why do I need an agent outside? You are not needing an agent outside. The agent is nobody except your own self appearing as a perfect living master outside because you don't know who you are. If you knew, you don't need a master. It's only because we don't know. We are regarding this body as our own self, our mind as our own self. That is why such an experience of our own self appears outside as a perfect living master. When he appears in our life, our mind can doubt because he does not appear as an extraordinary being. He appears as an ordinary person like ourselves. And there is a reason for that. In the human body, love is experienced, true love is experienced only with a human being. Others are all attachments. When we say, I love my house, I love my car, I love my children, I love, it's all attachment. In attachment, I is very strong, ego is strong, I love this, I do this, I. In true love, you forget the I, you only think of the beloved. The lover is never conscious of the lover, conscious of the beloved. There is really a difference. That is why in true love when it comes, it comes from a human being, an ordinary human being, not an extraordinary human being. Supposing an extraordinary human being comes, let's imagine we are sitting here and an extraordinary human being who can fly with his body in the air comes, flying into this hall and flies all over. We don't look at him. I'll stop speaking naturally. You all listen to me, you'll be seeing what is happening. And when that person is flying around, we wonder how he's flying. Many of us will think there's a trick. There must be some secret hope or some secret there. Some will say, no, it's there, no, there, he's really flying. Some might even swoon and even faint to see the strange thing. Some of us will admire this, how somebody can do. Some may even worship such a person. Nobody will love him. That's the whole secret. This extraordinary thing does not create love. It creates all other kinds of feelings, all other emotional feelings. It does not create love. An ordinary person like ourselves comes, we can experience love and friendship. Today somebody sent me a message from some old saint. He says, love is very rare, friendship even more rare. And perfect living masters are friends first. Perfect living masters are friends first. Lovers later and masters last. That's what they really are in our relationship with them. I had a beautiful experience with one of his disciples. I told many times this story of Dr. Isher Singh, who had to get an arm broken before he got initiated, who had to tie up his own father to take him for the son of his master. That Isha Singh, before he died, he spent so much time in our house. He said, I have found a discovery. A guru is Yar Pele Guru Bal. A perfect little master is a friend first and he's a master afterwards. If there's no friendship, why is that necessary? Because friendship, true friendship, is based upon true love. And that is why the friendship that we experience with such a person is with an ordinary person like ourselves. A perfect living master is just like us. He is an ordinary human being, born like an ordinary human being, dies like an ordinary human being, falls sick like an ordinary human being, gets medicine like an ordinary human being, eats food like an ordinary human being. And if he is a clean shaven man, he is a sure, 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 as like an ordinary human being. Shit shaven, shower. I am only mentioning this thing to say, perfect living master are no different in their human structure. No different in their mental structure, no different in their sensory structure. The only difference is that they are constantly 24 hours aware of what is beyond the mind. They are aware of all states of consciousness at the same time. If we want to practice meditation to reach the same state, 
we go step by step. First step is you have to forget where the body is before you can know the inner body. When you know the inner body, that's the only real body, nothing else. If you want to go further, you pull your attention from the inner body, then the body to the mind, to the causal body. When you are experiencing causal body, that's the only reality. Inner body is gone, physical body is gone, we know nothing else. If you want to go and find the soul, you can go and find the soul. Soul is the only reality. All these were illusions covering the soul. Only one experience you have. When you reach the total, which is only one, you are aware of everything. Because whole thing happens at that one place. Therefore, perfect living master, not master, perfect living master, who are very rare, very rare. They are operating from that point while they are human beings. Their awareness and consciousness is operating from there. And that is why when they see us, they see us as part of themselves. They see us at different levels. They see us as human beings, as part of themselves, as soul. They see everything. When such a human being comes into our life and looks at us, he's not looking at our body because that is not his function. He does not look at our mind. He does not look at our karma. He does not look how good or bad we are. He does not judge us. What he is looking at us is, is this soul ready to go back home? It, when the soul, inward feeling, not mental feeling, inward feeling says, I am tired of this. I want to go back home. Such a person appears. When he appears and looks at us, he is looking at the soul ready. And when he finds ready to go back home, he says, yes. I accept you, I will take you back home. He doesn't say I will teach you how to go back home. Teachers and masters teach us how to meditate, how to do things. Perfect living masters don't come for that. They are not teachers. They come to take us back home because they are operating from the home, which is part of our own self. That is why their role is very different from the role of all the teachers of the world. And their role is to take us back home when we are ready for it. When they say, yes, we accept you as a friend and we'll take you back home, for all purposes, our job is finished. That's all we could have done to seek insight to that extent and be ready. Our job is done. The job of the master starts. He has to take us back home. And if he's a perfect living master, he never fails to take us where? Same place where he is. This is not something where he says, I'll take you and I'll watch you from somewhere. He makes you himself. He takes you to the identical place. Some people say it's a merger or it's becoming one. These are words. The truth is, there is only oneness. There is only one total consciousness in which the whole thing is operating and we're making separation. Some people have asked me, if there is only one, what is the need of having so many souls? In a true home, in such fun, People say there are so many souls. At the same time, you say there's only one. What's this mystery about one and many? Mystery is very simple to solve. If you go there, of course, you solve it yourself. If you haven't gone, mentally we can explain it in a simple way. That oneness or one total is love. But not the experience of love. Love is one thing. It doesn't make love. It doesn't make beloved. Souls is merely a creation of the many within the one to make love and experience. And that's what happens. The same thing that happens and trickles down in different forms at every form of creation, including the physical form. Then we are all searching for love. All of us want to love and be loved. All of us love it. And that's happening because of our two realities there. The love has been made into experience of lover and beloved, of something that's exchanged. The same one is two, same one is men. It's because of this experience of the truth. Similarly, knowledge is being shared by the many. Similarly, blissful states, true happiness is being shared by so many. It's all from one. Appreciation of beauty is being shared always holding one. So remember that the soul in us, which is not the mind, is also doing something. 
in love is coming from the soul. True awareness without time is coming from the soul. Appreciation of beauty is coming from the soul. A blissful state which is a no fear like happiness or happiness is coming from the soul. But the other things coming from the mind, like thinking, reasoning, understanding, sense perception, making sense of things, logic, they are coming from the mind. There are similar things coming from sense perception, seeing, touching, tasting, smelling. They were all combined in the mind, they separate in the sense perception. And they all are operating in the physical body where the separation looks absolutely real and we are all separate. It's a wonderful way, wonderful scheme in which the true beauty of our own true self is being expressed in creation in so many ways. If you look at creation from that point of view, you will wonder how great this creation is. And of course, you will also wonder how great the creator is. And all creation and creator happen to be yourself, your true self. All that I am sharing with you is possible to personally realize through meditation, proper meditation, with the guidance of a perfect living master. Other masters can also take you up to the mind. The perfect living masters pull you through to their true, to your true home with their own oneness. It's a great opportunity. So I congratulate all of you for coming and joining. This is what we'll try to do during these few days. For a greater, more in-depth experience, we have a program called what is it, IMR. They have seen on the body. It must be IMR. I first thought it MRI. <laughs> but then I was told there's a medical procedure. IMR, Intensive Meditation Retreat. And we are having one in next month in uh, in California. And people outside the country have said, why are you confining this IMR, which are really useful? We have had four, I think four of them already. And everybody felt that it's very useful, practical, because we meditate for almost a week, regularly every day. And that actually makes it a very practical session. Instead of merely talking about it, it we're actually doing it. So that is why people want more IMR, and they said global IMR should be there. So next two years, we are having global IMRs. Uh, one in the United States, one in Asia, uh, one in Europe. The United States will be in Boston, Texas. The European will be in Germany. And the Far East will be in Bali, Indonesia. Below Australia, we have looked at place New Zealand will be the fourth one the next two years. We will announce all those four the President will announce all these four sometime at the end of this year and you can register for only one cent so that larger number of people get a chance to, to join the IMR. The number of people in the IMR will be limited because we want them to have actual experience of meditation, being able to ask questions to find out if there is any difficulty in the way. It's, it's a practical, practical week that we spend so we are going to confine in 60, 70 people and therefore it is a, a long waiting list we found for the previous ones. Uh, we are uh, trying to make some rules so that more people can take advantage that uh, you can only attend one IMR, that others get a chance. But the whole idea is that through this practice of meditation, we are able to gain access to all our covers physical, astral or sensory, and the soul, which is also a power, and totality is a reality. We are able to find this. So today, I will explain to you what meditation can do, what our true reality is, how this has come into being, and we will start our practice. The practice starts by the first step, discover where to meditate, nowhere outside. Nowhere on any particular room, any particular place, you are carrying the best meditation chamber on your head wherever you go. So you can meditate wherever you are. You can meditate in any position. The whole idea is to put your attention inside. So, if you are ready, let's start. Now there is, <coughs> question is asked, what posture should we adopt? What asana should we take for meditation? Because 
in some of the yogic literature, there are 84 positions of the body. You can twist the body in different animal shapes, or you can twist the body into a deaf body, you can twist the body and practice. And people think that is meditation. No, no, no. twisting your body can't be meditation. Why was that done? Because the earlier meditators, the yogis, who want to practice it, they did it in enclosed areas called caves, gufas. And those caves were very small. And to keep the body in active shape, the physical body in active shape, if you change your position in the 84 times that they mentioned, you have all the muscles of the body are exercised. It was an internal exercising in a close small space. You couldn't be doing jogging or you couldn't do running or do other things. That is why they introduced this. Today we are thinking that is real yoga. Yoga means union. Union is the true self. So that is only an exercise. Union is when you are united with your true self within yourself. So that is why what is the best position? Putting attention there. That position of the body where it does not hurt you. Some people try to say we want to have a lotus position, cross neck. They never sat like that before. So they try to put their neck cross, it's hurting. We are in the right position of meditation. You are meditating on your birth all the time. If you are paining somewhere, how can you meditate inside? You have to be in a normal, relaxed position. Sometimes they say, now we are going to do the lying down position. Very relaxed. It is relaxed, you go to sleep. You know, meditate. Therefore, the right position of the body, which is good for meditation, is that which does not create a discomfort by twisting your body somehow, nor is it so comfortable that it makes you go to sleep. And that is why the best position they found is to sit upright. We used to sit upright on the floor, and we can sit upright in the chair. But so long as we are comfortable, our attention is not drawn to any aches and pains, but is drawn to what we are thinking about, what we are trying to do. That means inside the head, that's the best position. So sit upright and no strain on the body, no strain on the eyes, no strain on the head. It's not a physical exercise at all. Don't try to make a physical exercise that you put a strain somewhere. You have to imagine something. If I say, can you imagine you're standing on this? How many of you can imagine you're standing next to me here? Just imagine. So easy. You have to imagine you're there. Was anybody put under any strain? Was the head strain? Was your body strain when you imagine here? Not at all. That's how we have to do the meditation. No strain, physical at all. It's not a physical exercise. You have to close your eyes and imagine you are behind the eyes, between the ears. That's it. So let's try. Close your eyes, sit comfortably, and imagine you are sitting behind the eyes. Don't worry what you are thinking, what you are doing, so long that you feel you are there. You are sitting behind the eyes, between the ears. If you are sitting too much in front, with your inner legs, slide backwards to the center. Stay in the center, know the thought. Think of what is happening in the center, not outside. Any pictures come in front of you, let them pass. Don't try to look at things. Let them just float in front of you and go away. You stay in the center. Any shadows coming, colors coming, images coming, ignore them. Don't move towards them. Pull back to the center. No other thought, please. Only think of what is happening around you, not outside. Keep your eyes closed till I count five. One, two, three, four, five. Open your eyes, welcome back. You will notice during the meditation exercises that after each session, short session, I rub my eyes with my hands and feet 
which is normal, especially in deeper meditation, you will find it easy to get back into body awareness by doing that. So that's a good habit. So it's easy. Otherwise, it can be taking little time to get out. How many of you could imagine that you were sitting inside in the center? Is it? How many of you could not do that? Or most of you were able to do. I'm very happy. Others will be able to do a little practice. How many of you saw yourself sitting there while doing this exercise? That was not correct. Because if you see yourself sitting there, you are not what you are seeing. You are the one who is seeing. Therefore, when that happens, and when it happens very frequently, when that happens, that you feel you are seeing yourself sitting there, and you are small, you fit in the head, you see yourself sitting there, you should say, who is looking at it? That's yourself. The one who is seeing is the self. Then make that self which is seeing feel it is sitting between the ears and the ears. So, it is important that you are there, the one who sees, not the picture that you are seeing, that you are making. Many people have spent years on this problem. That's why I'm bringing it up that when you see a picture sitting there, that's not you. Because you are seeing that picture, the one that is seeing it is you. And you have to be sitting there, not the picture, not the little image that you are making. It is natural for us to make that image, because the image we are trying to make is still, still with these eyes. We are not making image from the inner eyes at all. And I'll tell you one more thing. The image that you make, which you see in front of you, is actually not inside at all. You make that image outside. And I'll tell you one simple test. How to test whether the image you're making or anything else you're making is inside or outside. Supposing you see you are sitting inside and you are seeing yourself sitting inside. And with your eyes closed, you bring your hands up to your eyes with eyes closed where the image can be seen. And you will find your hand to cross the image before you touch the eyes. Which means the image was outside. We are still making it outside. We are still in body awareness. And we are not pulling off the inside. So that is why when we do that, we can be doing it for a very long time. For many years some people have done it. They have not made any further progress. So that's why I'm bringing to your life. Some of you were able to go in and some of you were able to see. Let's do it again. Once more. And be conscious. You that is seeing. You that is feeling. And I'll do some more exercises inside. Like making you stand up inside or look on the side. Things are not connected with the physical body at all. Which the physical eyes are not involved. Because when you are looking at the image, you can't really turn your head on the side. If you are the one looking at the image, you can turn, you can do stand up, you can do whatever you like. So I'll give you some little exercises this time. So once again, go back to your third eye center behind the eyes in the head. Imagine you are sitting there in the center and your ears are. Take a few minutes to do this. That you are behind the eyes and you are sufficiently behind. To feel your ears are outside, front of your forehead is in front, back is in the back, ears on the side, you're in the center. Just imagine that's where you're sitting. And then I will tell you more. Close your eyes and stop. You're all sitting at the back of the eyes, in the middle of your head. Now you stand up. But do not go below the eyes. Stand up in the center. Middle of the head. Stand up center. Now sit down. Stand up again. And sit down. Now stand up again. And look toward the right. Now look toward the left. Look in front. Now sit down.
Keep your eyes closed till I count five. One, two, three, four, five. Open your eyes. Welcome back. How many of you could do this successfully? If you could follow standing up. How many of you could look on the sides? Very good. You are well prepared for this meditation. Now that was, I noticed very carefully that when I said look to the right, hardly any of you turned your head. But normally, if we are not located here, we turn this head when we try to do it inside. Because we do not separate, separate our inner self from the physical body. But in practice it will become absolutely easy. Now, we all have a voice inside us. Like we have a voice outside. When we think, we are speaking words. But this mouth does not take any part. Many people, when they are repeating mantra, which is also a means of controlling the mind, we come to that later, they are speaking with the tongue. And the mind is thinking other things. Mind is also speaking in words. And we are speaking with the tongue. It's very important to learn to speak with the inner mouth, not with this inner tongue. Even repetition of mantras is only successful when we do it with the mind speaking and not with us. So I am going to now do this, this exercise where you will be talking inside. These mouths will remain closed. You'll be I'll give you the to whisper, talk, shout loudly. This mouth should not participate at all. That will show that you are really identifying yourself in the inner self. When you can do not only seeing, turning your head, standing up, sitting down, but you can also use the voice mechanism, which is inner voice and not outer voice at all. So we we'll do that exercise now. So once again, close your eyes, go back to the center. This is the meditation chamber of yours. Every time you will meditate in that chamber, with the furniture you have placed there, decoration you have done there, I would suggest decorate as beautifully as you can to become an attractive place. You like to go there. It will cost you nothing. So therefore, that is the place always to meditate, not outside. So once again, go to your meditation chamber and sit in the center. The more you sit in the center, the more easy it will become to do all these things. When you move forward or backward, it becomes more difficult. Go and sit at the center of this meditation chamber. Few people have a mantra or a simran or some word to repeat. Now in this exercise, you can start using them according to my words and you. Very comfortably sit in the center, relax. Don't be tense. Relax state. Whisper some words very slow. Only you can hear. Whisper one sentence. If you have a mantra, similar, whisper that very slow whisper. And see that you can hear it. Even slower, very light. Now say it loudly. Same words, same mantra, speak loudly. Now shout very loud. Now keep quiet and listen to the echo of what we just shouted. Keep quiet, listen to the echo. Now very softly sing a song, your favorite song, very slowly and comfortably hear singing the song. 
Det er jo lidt for. Now keep quiet. No more. No singing. No talking. Quietly listen to the mind speaking. Whatever it wants to speak. Absolutely quiet. Just listen. Keep your eyes closed till I count five. One, two, three, four, five. Open your eyes. Welcome back. How many of you could whisper? Pretty good. How many of you could speak very loud? How many of you could shout? I didn't hear any voice at all from you, which means you're all past. Very successful. Now you imagine what you are doing now is doing something completely with your inner self with this body not involved at all. It's very interesting what all is available to us here. Inner body. Did anybody feel any disturbance when you try to shout that there was problem in the throat or something? Anybody had problem? Nobody had a problem. This throat was not being used, this voice was not being used at all. So the voice was very clear. Now we'll do one more exercise uh, to make you more stable in the meditation chamber. All that I'm doing is to make you feel that is where we have to meditate and that self has to meditate if you want to go further. Otherwise, if you want to meditate with singing of outside songs or hearing music, that can calm your mind, calm your body. But this can open up inner experiences. So they look like imaginary, but they become very real that you find that you will begin to see what you're not imagining. That will also happen. Now we'll do simple exercise of imagining you are sitting in the center. There's a table on the right side, like I have it here. And there's a flower sitting on the table next to you, inside. And there's a drink. I have water, you can choose any drink. Preferably not intoxicated, but <laughs> you can choose a drink. And then you can have a favorite snack of yours, which you like to eat, and put the snack next to you. And once you have imagined these things, I'll give you further instructions. So close your eyes, sit in the center at the third eye center, middle of your meditation chamber. And imagine that on the right side of where you are sitting, you have a table. If you are sitting on the floor, it's a very low table. Sitting on a chair, it's a little high table. It's right next to you. And you can look at it and see there are flowers there, there's a drink there, and there is a snack. Make sure all three things are on the table on the right side. Now pick up the vase of flowers or vase of flowers and bring them in front of you. And look at them carefully. Watch very carefully. Are these the flowers that you always loved? Bring them close to you and smell them. Do you recall the fragrance of these flowers? Now turn them around and see if they look the same on the other side also. Now turn back and see if there is a change on the first side also or the other same flower. Try to remember when you saw these flowers before. When did you see these flowers earlier, long ago, and remember the smell of the flower? Try to recall. Now 
I put the flowers back on the table. Now take up your drink and bring it in front of you and look at it. Take one sip of the drink. See how it tastes. Does it taste like it has always tasted? Or little different? Take one more sip. Put the drink back on the table. Now pick up the table snack and see it's your favorite snack. Take a bite, small bite, see how it tastes. Do you remember this taste? Take one more bite, does it still taste the same? Put this plate back on the table. Keep your eyes closed till I count five. One, two, three, four, five. Open your eyes. Then come back. How many of you could see flowers? How many of you saw different flowers than you imagined? How many of you saw flowers that appeared to be emitting light or color? How many of you could recognize the drink that you had? How many of you thought it was a new drink? How many of you enjoyed the snack? All of you. <laughs> How many of you still have the taste of the snack in your mouth? Wonderful. Where did all this happen? You, some of you say flowers look different. Flowers that don't exist here. You can't imagine those flowers which don't exist here. And still you are able to see them. Because what you are seeing inside, you are trying to connect with things outside, but they are independent. The whole world that exists inside is independent and very different. The more you will put your attention there, the more you see, more extensively networked. When your body is left behind, which means you forget where the body is, the whole new world opens up. And you will see so many things there which are not here. But you will recall, you will connect some of those things, some rare things here, very common there. There's a whole new world there. All sense perceptions. Can you imagine you are just able to touch things, taste things, smell things, see things, and all, the, all of that happens. And earlier you would hear your loud voice. It's all happening without any use of the physical body. The body that you used is the astral body. That body you used is a body that is without any, any matter at all. It has all the sense perceptions, no physical matter at all. And once you are familiar with this body, it will become very easy for you to meditate further because it has to be done with that. Now one more experiment we'll do for now and that is that you will make this room into a dark room. Obviously it will not dark if you put flowers, if you could see flowers and drinks and then with your eyes closed. It was a lighted up room and your eyes were closed, it should be normally dark. When we sitting here normally close our eyes, it's dark. How come you saw these things so clearly? That's another secret. You saw these things because the things appeared visible without light. Here, you can't see anything unless light falls upon things. Things that you see inside do not require any light to fall upon them. They have their own light. Beings, people, you'll be able to see people at that level with more withdrawal of attention. You can see people who died, they are still there. You can see people who are in disembodied state, but you are looking at also from a non-body state. It can be very wide experience, just by the single exercise of 
putting attention on their body inside. And we will use other methods to make sure it becomes easy for you to go there in meditation. Therefore, I'll share with you how we can make it much simpler and easier to go there. Now, the final exercise is that we make their place dark and you will install a light, light bulb, a big light bulb, big one, in the center just above where you are sitting and have a switch on the side, a switch that can be dim and have you seen a dim switch which is dim and then you raise it up, it becomes high. We operate that switch and see how it works inside. So, in this exercise, you will make it dark. If not dark enough, you can even cover your eyes and make it more dark. So, you can do like this when you do this exercise. And if you can see it's pretty dark by itself, uh, that will be all right. But you can do like this, make it dark, and then we do this special session of generating your own light inside. We use a bulb. But later on you won't need a bulb also. You can light up as much as you like. There's so much light inside, you can't even imagine. And you will experiment with that right now. Okay, close your eyes, go back to the center. If necessary, cover your eyes and say it's dark. Now imagine that there is a light bulb just above you, but it's not lighted up yet. And on your right side, you can see with your hands, with your fingers, the switch is right at the bottom. Move the switch upwards very slowly and see the light brighten up. Very slowly. Make it little more, make it little brighter. Push it down again, make it zero, make it down. Now start pushing it up very slowly. See the light coming up. Make it higher. More light. Still higher. More light. Even higher. More light. Even higher. See the light increasing. Take it to the top and see how much light. Next one. Now put it down all the way back again. Keep your eyes closed till I count five. One, two, three, four, five. Open your eyes. Welcome back. How many of you could operate the light? How, how often would you able to follow my instructions to go up and down? How many of you saw strong light? when you go to the top. Could you imagine that you can create this light in utter darkness? If we put up all these lights off, you still see the same light. There's so much light in us. When you practice this, you'll find there's more light inside than ever existed outside. It's just a matter of practice and discovering it. In our body, we have the capacity to see they light and to see other things. If you were to read a newspaper, it will strain your eyes, you may need glasses. Inside, you can read the newspaper with 20-20 vision. You'll notice that. It's perfect. Inside, you don't need any hearing aid, you can understand very quickly. All sense perceptions work perfectly inside. And they work imperfectly in the body. The same sense perceptions, because the inner body is fitted into this body, are operating now even in this body. When you are thinking of things, and I made you think of things, the same mind that thinks inside also thinks in the inner body and also thinks in this physical body and also thinks independently when there is no body. These are all experiences you will have. And the simple technique is to stay longer there. I will do just a few seconds of these experiences with you. If you stay longer, a few hours, 
it will become very simple for you to have all inner experiences and as you enjoy the experiences inside your attention will be drawn very beautifully there are so many things we are curious about in life we are curious are there other planets aliens living here and we have not been able to go out to other planets something very odd to a very strong telescope large array of telescopes. We have got all over the earth now trying to find out what is outside. Inside, you can fly there and see. Okay, final exercise to fly into the sky. Would you like to do that? Yeah. Well, let's do that too. Go back to this eye center. Everything has to happen if you start from there. If you are not located well, none of these things will happen. Secret is to locate yourself at the right place to do all this. The right place is behind these eyes, in the center, like these fingers meet like this, then they meet like this, just like that. Behind, behind these eyes, like in the center, between the ears, if you feel, imagine you are there, all these things can happen. So that is the third eye center, where the door opens to these inner experiences. So imagine you are right near the third eye center now and sit comfortably in the center, very comfortably. Now look around, you will see around you some bright window-like light coming either on the right or left side or above and then you turn around and see whether you can see the window-like light. Get up and move towards the window where the light was coming from outside. And look out, you can see the sky there. Look out of the window and see the sky. Now you notice you are absolutely light, there is no weight. You can just crawl through the window and go out and fly. Just crawl through the window, go out and fly in the sky. Fly upwards, fly upwards very high, move upwards at high speed, look down you can see the earth below, you can see cities and earth below, like you are travelling out in space. Increase your speed of flight. See the breeze hitting you on both sides as you fly fast. See you gone beyond the breeze. You are still flying. Now turn around and come back where you can see the window far away and go right to the window. And go back to the third eye inside and relax after this long flight. Keep your eyes closed till I count five. One, two, three, four, five. Open your eyes. How many of you could fly? Very good. How many of you could fly fast? Very good. So many of you were able to do it. What can the mind react to what we are doing? And I want to tell you the mind reaction. What is this? Just imaginary exercises. They are not real. They are all imaginary exercises. Of course they are. But do we know where imagination comes from? Have you ever studied where actually our imagination comes from? From where we can produce everything we want to produce? Where does imagination come from? Where all scientists have discovered new things? Where does imagination come from? It comes from the astral plane, the sensory system. It does not come from the physical place. When you are using imagination, you are using something commonly used today. And that is why it's a very real thing here. What looks imaginary here, when we take this world as real, become real there, and this world becomes imaginary. It's just a matter of pulling your attention to that place. We did these exercises to show you the capacity 
or for inner self, the sensory system, in which the mind, thinking mind is the same, the self is the same. The one who flew, the one who saw flowers, was the same self that's sitting in the body and saying, this is the same me, I went there. You won't say somebody else went there. And that's the beauty. Whatever the experience, even when you are totality and only one, it will be the same self. Self will never change. Self is the only reality. All experiences will change. Experiences are unreal, they are just created. Self never changes, it is the only reality. And you see, it will always be the same self. Whether you are dreaming, it is the same self dreaming. You are awake, same self awake. You are doing these exercises, same self doing exercises. You will go higher up and discover the same self is your mind, the same self is your soul, same self is the totality, same self is the creator, self is the only reality. And this can be discovered by more progressive, deeper meditation, which we will try to attend. I am very happy you are joining me in these exercises. And the whole intention is to <coughs> enable you to move quickly towards withdrawing your attention inside. We have mistaken for a long time that to do meditation we have to focus our attention. And that London has caused long delays in any progress. Because when you focus your attention on something, you are actually moving away from yourself. There is no way to focus attention without moving away from yourself, no matter what you focus on. People say, I'm going to focus my attention on myself. And that's when they create the new self of the self, which is separate from there. Focusing attention takes the attention out. Withdrawal of attention takes the attention back. True meditation is withdrawal of attention, not focusing of attention. And what we did with imagination was to withdraw attention, not focus on anything. So that is why we have to get experience as possible. When we withdraw attention to ourselves, we have a break for lunch, enjoy the food for the body, I'm giving you food for thoughts, food for your senses, and I have food for the soul also. So enjoy the lunch, I'll see you back at about 3 o'clock. Thank you very much for participating so patiently with me.